Hello, my name is Rainer Gerhardt. I'm the guy who wrote our syslog and a couple of other logging tools, both on Windows and Linux. I'm also involved in standardization efforts and I'm doing logging since 1995. Today I'm going to explain how to use uh, a syslog to record messages from remote systems uh, and store them to their own log files without messages going to the regular log file. Uh, this is a very frequent question we see on the syslog mailing list and on uh, the forums, uh, so I thought it's a good idea to do that. I intentionally use the old style format, actually I have a version 5.8 uh, here with me, uh, which is pretty out Dated. Uh, so the configuration is a bit clumsy compared to what we do in V7, uh, but it uh, covers most bases that are, uh, or most versions that are distributed in the current distributions. Uh, I've set up my environment already a little bit here. Uh, this will be my main window. Uh, I have another window where I, which I use to generate some remote test messages. I use uh, Arthurslog's TCP flood tool. Uh, it's a testing tool that uh, can be used as a message generator. Actually it says send something to port 10, uh, 514, which I will use for TCP syslog uh, and generate one message. If you want to generate more than, well, yeah, you do more than M1. Uh, I've also already loaded the uh, syslog.conf uh, uh, into the editor. So let's see what we do. Yeah, probably we start best with the uh, syslog.conf. Uh, this is what we very often find in distributions. Uh, I've done this here with uh, Ubuntu, for example, and they have some pre-canned, oops, so that is usually what you'll find. Uh, in in your Asus or Conf templates, this or something along this, uh, uh, it's commented out for remote reception. As I said, I use TCP. Uh, we have a mod load statement for IM TCP, which activates TCP functionality, and we have this input TCP server run, uh, which says start a TCP server uh, and run it at this port over here, 10, 5, 14. I said that is uh, what I will be using. So let's write that out. Okay. And being on Ubuntu, I'll do a service restart. What now happens is uh, if, if we look at uh, syslog, we have our regular restart, and when I send a message, via TCP flood, message is sent, and what many uh, people have discovered is that message, uh, this MSG num is the test message uh, that the default format generated, that this message shows up in the regular log file. Uh, this is very often not what people intend to do. Uh, so the first uh, idea to solve the situation is that people start to write something like this. Uh, they create a special rule and they say log it to var log, uh, for example, remote dot log, let's say. Then they write this. <coughs> and once again, we go into the cycle and do an Arthur's log restart. And if we do the tail again, we'll notice uh, there's not yet a message, all messages are there. Uh, and if we do a tail on remote dot log, we'll have the same set of messages because our filter here says asterisk dot asterisk, which means all messages. So there's a bit of a problem, obviously, uh, because now we have both mixed. Uh, even further, if we send another test message, it f of course will end up in the remote log, here it is, but it will also end up again in the uh, syslog. And this is obviously not what we want to have, so let's first uh, remove the remote, just to make sure, oops, remote.log just to make sure uh, we start with a, with a fresh file. Uh, and there are various ways to go to the desired result. Uh, I'm using multiple rule sets, uh, uh, which is the best uh, way to solve this. And it works a little bit different. 
So we do not have a, a single rule set. Or well, rule set is what Arthur's log uh, processes in in rules, and there are tutor other tutorials on in depth in rule sets. Uh, and if we define multiple rule sets, that's actually what an input is bound to, and uh, messages are forwarded to and executed. So what we do is uh, we create a new rule set, and I have spared me some typing and already pre-created the necessary statement. So this is the new block. And what it does is uh, it, set, it creates a rule set which is named remote and inside that rule set it writes everything to varloc remote dot log and then it switches back, that's a, a part of the old style syslog config, then it switches back to the R syslog default rule set so that the other uh, inputs uh, uh, get what they want to have. Now the rule set is defined and it only does writing to remote.log, uh, but it's not being used yet and to do that we need to tell the listener uh, to bind to rule set and we do this with that statement over here. So we say bind rule set and we say bind to remote, which is this remote. What now happens is when the syslog message comes in via TCP, the TCP output knows that it should not forward it to the regular rule set that's running uh, inside our syslog, the default one that you usually do not define, uh, but that's just there, uh, but instead send it to the remote rule set, and the remote rule set only consists of this single statement, uh, so it's written to remote.log, uh, and once done, as there are no further messages inside the rule set, uh, the message is discarded and processing is ended for this message, so it won't be stored into the local log files. And vice versa, the local log files do not have, have their own uh, rule set, the default rule set, which we switch back to over here, uh, and so it won't be stored into remote.log. So now let's see, let's save that and see what happens uh, if we activate that configuration. Uh, there we are, yeah, there's our restart. And let's first check if our uh, syslog still contains everything we need. It does. And then let's see if our remote.log contains any messages and it doesn't. Yeah, you can see. Oops. It's an empty file right now. Now comes the interesting part, which is sending a message. And let's switch back and look at what remote.log looks and it has exactly the remote message, just as we wanted to have. Uh, and now comes the interesting question, what about the local messages? And as you can see, the uh, message is not over here. Uh, so this is exactly what we want to have. We want to have, let me go back, we want to have the remote message in their own file and we want to have the local messages just unmodified as they always were. And this is the kind of uh, magic setting that you need to have. Uh, create a rule set and you need with, with v5 you need to define the rule set before it's being used so you, we need to define it up here uh, and then bind to that rule set and that's exactly uh, what you need thanks for your patience